order and chaos, two universal opposites from before the beginning of time. While most of us are familiar with the concept of positive order and negative chaos, there is also a such thing as negative order and positive chaos. We are living in a world filled with chaos and order, much of it negative on both counts. The widespread chaos of drugs, disease, and war have taken their toll on the planet, while political and corporate order threatens the freedom of not only the human body, but the mind as well. When the mind becomes slave to an order that would destroy its freedom and create chaos within the soul, it becomes necessary to disrupt that order, to destroy its power. There is a new chaos coming, one that has been growing over the past century, threatening to destroy all that the old order has built, threatening to create a new order that will have no respect for past, present, or future. A past that denies the pain of a people destroyed, a present that has no understanding of history and its role in the present, it will be destroyed, a future that does not include four-fifths of the world's population must be destroyed. Welcome to the destruction of order.
here, GJ3000. Interstellar Fugitives, Volume 2. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty big project for me to be on, considering that um, I grew up listening to a lot of the UR stuff and basically all the submerged labels. Um, so, always supported the label even before I started working here, which was like five years ago when I started working here. But the first project came out like 97, 98. I just remember the impact it had, especially on my friends, Detroit, and really worldwide. But that album was uh, so good to me because the sound that was on it, it was electro stuff, it was hard, it had ethnic sound and stuff, real percussion stuff, had all kinds of different stuff, Drexia type sounds, you know. Um, but when it came out, Mirage was on there, Afro-Germanic, so the, the fusion of the, the sound that was on it just really killed me when I got it, and that was the kind of sound I was into when I heard it, I was like, wow, this is the shit right here. You know, so as soon as I got it on vinyl, you know, everybody was playing that stuff in the city, man. Like, if you were a techno DJ, you were playing that fucking record, you know? Um, so, you know, of course, you are a legendary label, so for me, even to be on it, and Mike even asking me to be on it, is great for me, considering that um, I didn't start making music, really, until I started working here. So, um, and when Mike asked me to be on it, of course, I'm going to jump on the chance to be on it, so... Submitted my tracks and he picked uh, one song, so I got one song on the on the album that out of the four that I gave him was probably my favorite one. So um, and it fits the concept of the whole the whole album. You know, I hate to be cliche and say a dream, man, but to even be on the UR compilation for me is huge, man, because it's always looked up for Mike and the label and submerged. So um, for me to be on it is a big deal, man. So I'm just I'm glad I'm on it and. I think it's gonna do well, man. Double CD. First, this, this volume two, what is it, eight years later? Seven, eight years later since volume one. So I think this this one is, I hate to say better than the first, but the first one was real dope, but this one, it way exceeds that one because of the, the type of style that's on this double CD. There's more producers on it. I mean, there's like, Man, I don't know, there's so many producers from the camp here that's on it, so many different sounds, and the, you can really hear the difference in styles on it from each producer. And it's not just techno, it's not electro, it's not house, it's just all types of shit from like hip hop sound and shit to dance floor stuff to just listening stuff. I mean, you can really hear the soul in that stuff, you know what I mean?
so I'm gonna give y'all a whole lot. It's a group of the top-notch techno artists from the city of Detroit coming together to bring you guys a collaboration of techno extravagance that you've never heard before. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be rock, I think, and I'm just proud to be a part of it. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad. I'm so glad that Banks finally decided, okay, yeah, Frank is going to be part of it. Aquanauts uh, coming at you from uh, the depths of Submerge, uh, Underground Resistance, uh, on the Interstellar Fugitives 2 uh, project uh, that should be uh, released in Japan. And, uh, uh, working on the uh, Interstellar Fugitives, let me see. Um, big opportunity. Uh, the first one was a huge success. And uh, you know, I'm very lucky, very proud to be working on, uh, on this project. Um, even uh, just uh, being able to go over to uh, Japan where we actually worked on uh, most of the project, finished the project in Japan. Uh, that was a great experience. Um, as far as being a, a fugitive, uh, a couple years ago, I don't think I would have thought uh, I would have uh, been sitting in the UR camp and uh, also considered a fugitive now, but uh, I've learned quite a bit, uh, you know, being with these guys. And uh, I do have a couple tracks uh, that made it to the record, which uh, I'm very proud of, very happy to be a part of that. Um, all the other guys have made it as well. You know, everybody worked really hard. Um, I think it's going to be a, a success uh, when that gets released. And uh, especially, I guess, sometime next sure year when the vinyl comes out uh, and everybody here in the, uh, in the States can, uh, can hear what we did as well. That'll be great. Um, looking forward to possibly uh, even touring with the fugitives, some of the fugitives might go back over uh, seas and, and tour off of some of this. I think that's going to be uh, another great opportunity for, for some of us uh, who are just uh, getting started in this. But uh, I'm very proud and uh, I hope it, uh, hope everything goes well. I know it'll go well and, uh, you know, be watching, you know, keep it out before uh, new one tell us fugitives too. It's going to be hot.
excited about finally, you know, getting on you are and getting some stuff out. It's been um, one of one of the uh, labels that I always wanted to be on and look forward to a lot of good releases next year. Got the uh, Interstellar Fugitives project that I'm uh, think is gonna be a big success. Wanna give Mike thanks a lot of props for finally situations that's advantage to today advantage you know uh, uh, drugs is a dangerous thing and I don't care how a person will try to introduce it to you 
uh, uh, or how they may try to make it appear, there's no future in it. You know, drugs is just it's just a terrible thing uh, to become involved in, and it's something that you, it's unnatural. It's unnatural, and when you try to put something unnatural into something that's natural, bad things happen. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. When you put something unnatural into something that's natural, bad things happen. And what we what we know is that uh, uh, we have to be be aware. We have to be aware of that. And uh, yeah, I just caution. I caution all the fans, especially those those in uh, uh, places like Japan and China and over uh, in Asia. You know uh, uh, that uh, they really don't know. See the Western the Western culture. You know a lot of that stuff is what was introduced into the culture. But over there, it's, to me, it's got a natural. It just look like everything over there is so natural and so serene. And the spoil that uh, uh, with uh, a lot of BS, <laughs> a lot of BS. It, it just ain't. It ain't just. It, it's, it's not necessary. Uh, the music, the music uh, uh, that we enjoy. Uh, uh, we just hope that that's uh, uh, how underground resistance uh, as a group. Uh, it's received, not in terms of uh, uh, something that uh, uh, somebody, you know, some kind of reputation or some kind of uh, bad rap that the, the public are trying to put, 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 and try to tie that to us, and we're not about that. We uh, we about the music and, uh, and putting out a product that the fans can enjoy and uh, something that you can just grow up with and something that you can live by. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, and you know, like the, like the, uh, like the, like the old proverb, like the old proverb says, you know, peace comes from within. So you got to go in there and get it. You can't get it from out there. You know, it's, it's not out here. It's not a hocus pocus thing. It's a thing that uh, uh, you really learn to uh, to enjoy that comes from within. And so yeah, we, we try to we try to bring that to you, and we just enjoy doing it. And uh, we, we hope that uh, this project that we got going with Interstellar Fugitive uh, be well received out in the public. Talking about a lot of the Asian influence on, on this particular release, 
again, that comes from the whole idea of us being inspired by those concepts and seeing how those concepts relate to us and what we've been going through. So it's kind of an interesting thing when you think about it. You've got this storyline in the CD that talks about the fugitives coming to Asia in order to try to help the people there. And yet we find out that we end up being helped in the process of going over. In fact, the assistance that the folks were looking for actually was always there. And I think the message behind that is that the things that you need most, you usually have. Sometimes you don't know it, sometimes you don't recognize it, sometimes you don't see it, but the things that you need uh, usually are a lot closer than what you would ever expect. Uh, I used a 
Japanese Kyoto in one track. And after all the stuff that I had worked on, Mike chose two that were slower and more experimental, but I think um, they're gonna fit into the, the theme that the first Interstellar Fugitives started with, which was kind of like this very uh, otherworldly, outer space, um, still very uh, dark and, and aggressive feeling to it. You feel it, like the tension in the tracks. There's a lot of uh, aggression there. And that comes from, partly from Detroit and also partly, I think, from everybody that's involved in you are coming from a background where you had to struggle and fight for everything you got in the world. So I think, uh, I think that's going to come through the music. Slide is something that uh, Mike, Dex, and me came up with in the UR Labs. And um, it's like, it's like taking some music and sliding it, like making it like a, like a wobble, like just like a wobble. And uh, putting some acid in it and some 909 kicks and, you know, and making it like, like for like DJs for like you know so they can go out and battle with it and just use it as a tool um, and personally man I think Slide came from um, an old UR track called Twister it was an um, Acid Rain 2 or 3 I think and um, that one if you listen to it it's got elements of Slide all up in it but uh, Mike, Mike likes to say Slide started like a year ago Shoot, slide started like six, seven, eight, nine years ago. But um, hopefully, uh, the world catches on to it and um, you know plays it and likes it and keeps buying it. So uh, that's pretty much it with slide, man. song is like beautiful and then you got something by like the Aquanauts song Crackzilla and then you got like a, ch uh, a track by Chuck it's just like it's like a 60s Vietnam vibe I mean you got everything on there and you got Dex's track and for me to be a part of that it's an honor man because I get to present my my style on like a wide scale for the world to hear Thank you. 
Following an ambush of the convoy in the bathroom. And in collusion, local police basically did the track with these thoughts in mind, like being born and just going through life up to the time you die, basically. You know, just living, just living is always going to be a time where everybody got to go, go to that next level. That's basically what the track is about. since that time and um, all the fellows that I had met over there we were like brothers and we all had a thing like watch each other's back and we'd be all right we'd be back home one day and that concept stuck with in our mind to the point where it actually happened that way I met this woman when I first got to Vietnam old old woman she said war she could speak pretty good English and she told me like you know, why are you worried? He asked. Uh, well, I'm in a war. You know, I want to go back home. I want to really be here. But she said, don't you worry. This time, next year, I see you again. You know, so I had forgot about it. And went on to the war part. Went on to my assigned unit, the Big Red One, which was a very tough unit. It was like a ranger unit. And um, it was mostly, when I got there, it was very few blacks. You know, my company was like 150 people and about 25 blacks. So it was hard to get along with other guys, but I blended in right quick. Uh, I grew up in the woods, so I kind of knew what the surrounding was all about. And I called on right away my job and what I was supposed to do to survive. And, as time went by, I could reflect on quite a few battles we had. We called them firefights. And sometimes we had like three or four firefights a day. And it was very tiresome. It wore, it wore anybody out. It was like an eight hour job, but only been doing 12. And it was a hell of a job. I miss a lot of my friends, which I'll probably never see again, but I can remember all of them. It's like it was yesterday. We were very close, and we endured a lot, a lot. And it's time for me to go home, I survived. Uh, a lot of ups and downs. There were some good times, some bad times. But I looked at it as a positive way. Stay close to my friends. And I, see, I come across this woman. I had two weeks left in the country. She walked up to me. I was surprised. She walked up to me and said, G.I. I said, G.I. I looked around and there she was. It was like the war had started all over again. And it just, she said, I told you, you're going to be okay. You're going to make it. You're going to be fine. I was like in total shock. I felt good. She smiled at me, smiled at her. She didn't take care of me. I lived a good life.
myself uh, through um, three songs on the album. Uh, songs that I'm on, uh, Kobe and Mustard, and uh, Control Substance. Um, the music I've been doing lately has been a bit more experimental, a bit more down tempo, um, a bit more aggressive. Um, um, pretty much exploring my my um, my other uh, music interests, uh, hip hop, down tempo, techno, mix mix them together. You know, so uh, uh, musically, I think I've progressed in the last uh, from the last album. The last album was more electro, uh, very aggressive. This album is a bit more open minded. Um, I work with Cat um, uh, uh, from Japan. We can get a track together, which is great. Um, reminds me of this, this complete, epic, united, resistant feel, you know? So uh, I'm pretty much happy with my progression this far. Um, and also, I'm, I'm a, um, one of the two designers for UR, for the Resistance, uh, me and Hapu Hawk. Um, I also did uh, the cover and design for the ISF2 album, uh, Destruction of Order. Um, and it was, it was actually a chore designing it. <laughs> because, you know, as you know, you know there, there's a lot of opinions and a lot of um, uh, detail or, or it's, just, it's just a lot of thought in the actual album and uh, and it was just it was hard for me not really hard for me but it was a chore for me to you know merge all these ideas and these concepts into one uh, unified thing but ultimately the end product is dope it's real good you know and um, I'm just happy that everyone is happy with it uh, and there's, there's, there's a lot of detail in the, in the actual design, so, um, you know, hopefully I do a hop through those as well, so, <laughs> so that's what I Aficionados tastes 
But as a as a Blake, I've been a little remiss. I kind of lagged in the polls, so to speak. I came back with uh, Geiger Counter. This is a uh, semicolon hyper weight. Talking to you live. Please don't use any of those in that magma plasma display. I know you're too wise for that. Young, what is it? Young scientist. Yeah, young scientist. What up, though? CCLE, what up, though? I know I know a little bit more than you think I do. Smarter than average, though. Yo, fuzzy time. Talk to you later. Stay funky. That's about it, fellas. Thanks. International DJ, it's nothing like home. Home is where the heart is.
top three clubs that I think in the world right now, okay? Number one, Liquid Room, aka Old Liquid Room, aka New Liquid Room, Tokyo, Japan. Number two, The Fuse, Brussels, Belgium. Number three, Floridia, 135. That's uh, in Spain, all right? All three massive sound systems, the vibe is just out of this world. Uh, new in the star, fugitive. I'm coming off with uh, just, you know, still being a fugitive, number one. And still getting my stuff played in the realm of being, you know, one of the few. But in the star of fugitive. It's kind of different from the old concept. The last concept was really introduction. My last track on it was Maroon, you know, by the African tribes. My man, live long and prosper. But uh, the next, the next install fugitive project is gonna be really a little bit more darker for me, and much more wide.
Luther can uh, bring. So, uh, kind of like a really high military type of level of uh, achievement to get on to the project. So, it's a, it's a lot of competition between all the various graphic artists, the various uh, musical producers, and also the uh, conceptualists, uh, because it takes those three teams within you are to make any one uh, project go off. And uh, I demand uh, the best out of the people. And uh, you know, at you are a lot of the guys is used to. Uh, we call it getting beat down, getting the beat down. Uh, when they bring something that's inferior, it's eliminated. Um, and if they bring too many things that's inferior, then they are eliminated. You know, like in evolution. So my purpose in this project was to ensure that our best, our best effort went forth. Uh, because like a lot of times I explain to the, to the musicians and the conceptualists and the, the various uh, graphic artists that these projects will probably out, ain't gonna probably, projects will and the music will outlive them. So they have to look at it as if, uh, what's my contribution to the man? You know, you don't wanna, you don't wanna make a shitty or a mediocre contribution and what would your kids think of? So, you know, a lot of guys didn't make it, just to put it simply. And, uh, you know, we always encourage them to try hard the next time there'll be another project. And uh, that's how we kind of keep the best music coming out through, through fierce competition.
what I feel about the music and it's really the gospel. So to me, the link is really freedom in the music, more than just freedom, but it's just uh, evolution of it. And uh, it's, just, it's just an uplifting thing, you know? So when I'm playing the church, when I'm playing uh, recordings and techno music, basically, it's just, I get the same feeling. It's just a vibe of openness and, and it's a release for me. type of changes would happen when we got over there. Uh, that's why we did most of the project in Detroit. I wanted to ensure, I was worried that people would get over there and get soft and, uh, you know, lose the edge. I think a lot of artists, you know, when they travel outside of their original environment, tend to change so this was a drastic experiment in if that would actually happen on the other hand we wanted to be in the actual area where all these great warriors came from to soak up some of the spirit from them and bring our spirit to them so uh i think for the projects that we finished we, we started three or four particular projects in Japan and actually finished them in Japan. So for the listener, it'll be interesting to see, you know, to listen to see the change. And uh, I noticed that some artists uh, definitely changed and uh, they stayed over there too long. They 
in the Benny Sunday Park. Um, and I think it changed for better. A wide more experience, a greater understanding of humanity, all that type of stuff. But you know, when you're making records, that shit don't mean nothing, really. Uh, some of them <laughs> didn't change at all, and they just brought the shit over there with them. Uh, which was particularly fucked up and we had some days where we was fighting and arguing and going nowhere uh, all to make a better product which is Detroit you know we, we fight hard and some people just brought the fight with them probably <laughs> yeah some of them I ain't gonna say who but yeah uh definitely was very interesting to see some people can't change and other people adapt very quickly learn picking up the language picking up how to eat with the chopsticks or the, the customs what's rule what's not rule and then you know other people don't just don't even give a fuck you know and they just spread uh their particular way of how they do shit which ain't bad neither, it's just how you get along, you know, so uh, not to say one is better than the other, you know, um, I think Detroit had a lot of flavor, you know, people should be careful what, I guess the overall lesson in this whole project is, you should be careful what you ask for, you know, if you want some Detroit guys coming to your place and, and, and doing they thing and all that. Well, you know. Hey man, you just gotta be careful. I, I seriously doubt if anybody will ask us to come over there anytime soon. Like, what's Detroit like? Because they just imagine this big 
fucked up ghetto, decayed, industrial zone, or whatever. Whatever goes through their head, gangs, or whatever type of stereotype they have. But if they don't wake up real quick and see what's hitting them, then they gonna live in Detroit. Real soon. That's what I see. I think Detroit's the head of the We already been through what they going what they about to get go through soon. They get programmed to wear this. Just be that. Uh, be everybody but your damn self. And uh, they should they should take it from me. Uh, when you don't know who you are, you <laughs> fucked up. So they're very fortunate to know who they are. And uh, having your roots. Because without no roots, then uh, you're like a tree with no roots. Anytime the wind blows, you just fall over. So they should be very careful about um, what they take in through their eyes. And, you know, because some of the questions people ask me just show me how stereotyped we are as African Americans over there. You know, they think all of us rap or uh, sing or box or sports or it's just some it's very stereotypical images of us. And a lot of people ask me those uh, stereotypical questions when in reality they don't give a fuck something on them. And usually it ain't nothing to do with so they should be careful. Like I said, they'll be in Detroit soon.